This is our uh, keynote panel, and this is a really interesting chat we're going to have about the corporate sector taking action and building on the incredible opportunity that is driven by refugees and displaced people. When you came home, what sort of lessons did you bring with you, and did you feel like you could hang on to what you'd learnt in the DRC and pull it back into your workplace? Absolutely. Some of the things you uh, see there are things you're not used to or you're not expecting. Um, before we went, we were talking about the security detail and what should you do, don't drink the water, be careful of all this, get all these vaccines. And then you go there and it's very different. Um, you see the people there are living, they're managing, but very basic. So what we are used to here is very different. The basic things is what they need there. Uh, and it was, when you come back, you sort of have a greater appreciation. You can share that with the people in your team, with your children, because we take a lot of things for granted here. Um, and, and you understand that we, we have a role to play. We can make a difference. We all do it individually here as a group, um, but as organizations, there's so much more we can do. And that's the thing that come, you come back with and say, what else can we do now? After the Vietnam War, we did um, go on a boat and ended up at a UNHCR um, camp. Um, and I think, I mean, the first thing is just like deep gratitude to the UNHCR for the work that you've done. This was decades ago, but you continue to support refugees today. Um, you know, there were really simple things like being able to have access to medication or shelter or clean water, really basic things that we take for granted. Um, but also being able to have hope when you're just a number in a system and you don't know your future. I think in uh, my role now, and certainly as I've worked through the tech industry, um, it's really about how can I give back? Not only do I have great gratitude for what the UNHCR has provided and what Australia has provided me, it's more about thinking about positive impact that we can create as individuals, but also as um, organisations and how we can collaborate because we can amplify and have greater impact together. We don't often think about what it's like to exist in the world without a sort of formal sense of identity. Tell us what it means to be human to you. To be honest, the first time I actually felt human when I stepped on that plane and I came to Australia. Everything up to that moment was a complete limbo. I had no chance, no dreams, because I didn't exist from a legal point of view. And that struggle, struggle started with me ever since I was born. And imagine being uh, acknowledged by that fact at the age of 13. I found out I was stateless and I found out I had no papers and I had no nationality and there was no, ways, no place for me to go. And I ended up dealing with these extreme difficulties just to find an identity. And I failed time and time and time again. At a certain point, I just gave up on dreaming and just accepted the fact I'm gonna be stateless for the rest of my life until Talent Beyond Boundaries and Accenture came through and I could dream again. What is it like to live without hope? It's bad, and I wouldn't wish it on anyone, because you uh, come to a point where you only satisfy your basic needs, and just to eat, drink, and survive from day on to, on to the next day. You have no expectations, you have no long-term objectives or goals. You lose that sense of importance, or that sense of purpose, and all you care about is simply to just keep on breathing. And for someone to see me from the outside, that that could be shocking because I was healthy, I was going to college, but deep down, I had nothing. I had no papers. My name, for the majority of my life, was Fadi X. Because I had no father name, no last name, no birth certificate, my college ID read Fadi X, my master's degree says Fadi X. And for you to go through your life being called Fadi X is a bad experience. The corporate involvement. You had a number of lawyers working on your case. I know it was a very, very hard road for you to get an identity, to get to Australia, to have a job. Without that corporate money, without the lawyers, would you be here? Never. Not in a million years. And if you look at how a stateless person's life go through, I am the anomaly. I am the exception. Stateless people are not educated, the majority of them. They don't sit on panels and, and discuss these type of things. They don't go and work for a corporate like Accenture. Stateless people are often homeless or they get brainwashed to joining terrorist activities. They are imprisoned, criminals or even dead. Because when you are stateless, no one defends for your right. And I actually faced that 
a lot of problems in that area growing up because I had no one defending for my right. I didn't know actually that statelessness was a thing. I did not even know what to call myself up until the age of 18, I believe. And up until that point, no country or no embassy would come to my aid. And I used to get detained sometimes for 48 hours simply for the fact they did not know what to do with me. I would show up at an army roadblock and they asked me for my papers. And all I had was a high school uh, ca uh, card saying Fadi X. And if you're a soldier and looking at that and says, why is your name Fadi X? No one would believe that story. So he, they ended up detaining me for two or three days just to make the right phone calls or to even care or bother wondering about the guy sitting in the prison cell, right? So if it wasn't for Accenture and TBB and the amount of resources, they moved mountains to get me here. I honestly, I am afraid to think where I would have ended up right now.